Yeah, it's kind of nice out here. I got here around the right time, too, because there was, like, cold weather and all this other stuff. I mean, there was cold weather, uh, snow. I think there was all kinds of things going on, so, yeah. <laughs> I got here at the right time, and hopefully I'll be leaving at the right time, too. We're not going to make it to the uh, receiver until tomorrow. All right, back here in the truck. I've been doing some trip planning, try to figure out where I'm going to be uh, stopping. We've got another fuel stop. <laughs> Surprise, we'll actually make it. It's out of Love's. So we're going to go there. That's just south of Indianapolis. And then we're going to go past that. And there's a rest stop in, uh, close to Lisden, Indiana. Uh, should have enough time to be able to get there, and that's where we're going to shut down.
Ah, a little bit of driving there. We are at our next fuel stop, which is Love's. Almost was confusing getting coming in here because there's a pilot like right over there and you got to go one street and turn one way. <laughs> a little confusing. I'm just kind of like one step at a time. Where's the signs? <laughs> I saw the sign and it opened up my mind. I saw the sign or opened up my eyes, whatever. <laughs> I saw the sign, yay. Uh, we're gonna go ahead, this is actually a complete fill up here. So we're gonna go ahead and do that and we'll get going. I have, uh, I don't know, we'll see what happens when we get to that rest stop. Hopefully there's some spots open. There was a sign saying it was low, so uh, we'll, we'll see.
Well, we're all filled up. I hope you're filled up. Uh, or at least I hope you got snacks and a drink because we're back on the road.
Well, good morning, and uh, it's the day of our delivery. Uh, you know what? This seems like a good uh, truck stop. Sorry, my rest stop. I don't even know where I'm at. Uh, I had read some reviews on Trucker Path that there always seems to be spots here. And late at night, it was like after 10 o'clock, there were still like two spots next to me. Uh, even now, there's still some spots next to me. So I'm going to mark this down as a favorite. This is one where if you're driving late at night, you'll be able to find a place to to stay and not have to be out in the street. Or, you know, the side of the street. Oh, what I gotta tell you, it's friggin' cold! So I got the truck on. I didn't have it on all night. Uh, so like I said, there's no need for me to run it all night when I'm warm underneath the covers it's just when I get up <laughs> but that's why I've got that's why I've got my little heater thing right there so it's kind of heating up this this area but it takes it takes some juice out of my out of my generator though that's for sure see now you can probably see things so yeah this is why I've got my heater right here so the truck is heating up uh, the cab and everything. This is just heating up the area here in front of me. You know, it's kind of like having a campfire and you're just kind of like, oh, yeah. <laughs> this thing, it really takes power though. You can see that. It was a lot higher than 58%. I think it was up to 70, but it is just, it's sapping the power out of that, but at least it, you know, it works. I can hook it up to the inverter, but the inverter does not like it. It doesn't appreciate it. It just beeps. So, ah, but yep, getting dressed and ready. Well, I just made a horrible discovery. The inverter on the truck no longer works. I wonder if that's why the thing was always beeping. Yeah. Um, it's not working. I've tried resetting it several times. I thought maybe it might have been my power strip. And so I decided to plug something in and directly. Uh, into it directly rather than through the power strip. Nothing. And, and it's on. The inverter's on. The light is on and, and everything. But there is nothing uh, coming through on it at all. <clears throat> I only noticed that because the laptop, when I had turned it when I had turned it on, it was not charged up all the way. I'm like, okay. Great. Great. And I don't know what it's going to take to for them to install a, another inverter in here. Thankfully, I can charge up the my generator through the DC, but it takes longer. That's the problem. <coughs> well, I guess we'll just have to figure this out somehow. Now I can set my I can set the generator back here. And I think the there's a there's an outlet over here. Plus I have the little Walmart inverter that I bought and I should be able to hook the laptop up to it. Because this doesn't take a whole lot of power. Yeah so I think there's something wrong with the inverter. You know, it was probably just not a really good inverter. It was, like I said, it was probably a thousand watts or something, and hardly, hardly enough to really do anything with. But it worked last night because I made dinner and and stuff. 
<clears throat> but yeah, it doesn't work now. I guess I'll need to go to a truck stop and get my own inverter and go from there. Man, I'm having to replace everything on this truck. I tell you, I feel like I've got to put this truck together with scotch tape and duct tape and rubber bands and stuff. Alright, so <clears throat> here's this inverter here that I had bought from uh, Walmart like before I went out with my first mentor, you know, the crazy one. So this one should be able to charge up the laptop right now it's it's being charged directly from my generator thank goodness I got this thank goodness I got this otherwise um, in the middle of the night I would have stopped breathing because my CPAP machine was stopped working so that, that's wonderful isn't it <clears throat> but yeah so it's just it's I just have it plugged in there this is how I was able to know that the inverter wasn't working because I just I tried plugging in plugging in things in directly and then I plugged it in there to make sure that they you know they were working but it's it's on if you look down here you can see that the power is on it's got the little red light so I mean it's on but when you plug something in it just yeah it doesn't work all right, well, since the inverter no longer works, we're going to have to power this through 12 volts with this adapter right here. So, yeah, fun, fun, fun. I, well, I guess I can tie that thing up now. Uh, the little inverter over there is not going to be enough, but uh, this this will. Well, <laughs> that that over there, but it's it's just it's going to take longer, unfortunately. So we got our cable, and we will plug it up. Oh, okay. Well, that just goes directly into it. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I thought I needed this. I don't. Okay, so this is just going to plug in right here. And we're not going to get any power, apparently. Okay, well, I guess... Oh, wait a minute. There it goes. So, yeah, it's given a power. But you can see... It does not give a lot of power. So, according to this, it's going to take... Like, 11 hours or so to fully charge it up. And that's from where it was, from like 42%. <clears throat> that's crazy. But at least it's something. Give you folks a chance to see the uh, rest stop here before we take off. A little pond over there with orange cones. Yep, all in Indiana. We got this nice little uh, building here that's got the restrooms and uh, there's some vending machines outside. And yeah, you know, some trucks had left in the morning, but I was surprised. I thought this, this would fill up, but no. It's been, uh, it's been a treasure, that's for sure. Definitely going on my list of saved places. And yet another thing that has become broken 
if I try to turn this, it's going to it's going to break. So I have to I have to push on it, <laughs> and then I can turn it. <laughs> oh, Chiana, girl, what are you doing to me? <laughs> I told you this this truck's got personality. It has got personality. It's time for us to get going, and how exciting. We're gonna be driving right through the bottom part of the default map of Microsoft Flight Simulator 1 and 2 and Sublogic Flight Simulator 2. We'll be driving through Champaign, Illinois, which was the popular destination to fly from Chicago Megs all the way down south as far as that map would go, which was Champaign, Illinois, Champaign Willard, University of uh, Illinois. Uh, and then we're also going to be driving through Bloomington Normal, which was on Microsoft Flight Simulator 2 and Sublogic Flight Simulator 2. The, the airport was listed there. On Flight Simulator 1, not Sublogic Flight Simulator 1, that didn't really have anything. <laughs> Microsoft Flight Simulator 1, the only thing that was there was the VOR. So you could fly to it, you couldn't land there unless you wanted to land out in the green. Uh, but yeah, we're actually going to be going through both. Um, and if you'd like to learn a little bit about each of those two cities, um, I did a virtual flight to both of those cities as part of the Killer Gamers World Tour with X-Plane. I treated those kind of like a travel documentary like we're flying from one place to another. Now let's go into town and see what's there. So um, if you're interested, here's the information right here uh, for the <laughs> for the Champagne uh, flight. So hopefully uh, you'll enjoy that. Um, and then over here, you can uh, click on for the Bloomington Normal uh, flight. So we went to, yeah, we went to Bloomington Normal first and then we went to Champaign. But here we're going to be driving through Champaign first and then Bloomington Normal. But if you'd like to learn a little bit more about those uh, places and the airport and stuff, you might, you might enjoy uh, watching that. And it's got a uh, table of contents and stuff in there. So if you just want to skip over the flight and go right to the uh, documentary part, you know, you, you can definitely do that. Or you can, you know, say and enjoy the flight all the way through. So, <laughs> hope you enjoy that. Meanwhile, let's get on the road.
welcome to Illinois. We're a little further in there, we're near, uh, what was it, Farmer City, I believe. And this uh, Zarnar's freaking out. <laughs> it's like, oh no, you might have to do a, a difficult maneuver. I like how it says you may have to perform a difficult maneuver and then like it'll tell you to make a U-turn in an area that you shouldn't be making a U-turn in with an 18-wheeler or going down a country, you know, like some private road or something like that. May 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 uh, contain a difficult maneuver. Well, don't give it to me. <laughs> don't give it to me. <laughs> uh, anyway, we're here at a rest stop uh, just past Farmer City. Um, I, um, I'm going to put it in my Garmin, but I saw, uh, on the, one of the blue signs, there was like a restaurant or something that said truckers welcome. So I don't know if there was a truck stop there or just happens to have a place for truckers. So, um, I'm going to, uh, put something back there and, um, uh, have it in my list of, uh, saved spots. I never know. Next time we come this way, um, if I got some information on it, you know, it's like, hey, well, we know we can go over there and make a stop. So, yeah, I'm gathering all this information so that way the more and more we're out here, the more places I, I can, uh, I'll can, have that I come across that we can stop at, whether it's shopping or eating or resting, whatever the case may be. So, good stuff. Oh, and... Uh, we had come up to a part where there was a Loves, and it was a big size Loves too, and it was not listed on the Garmin. The Pilot was. There was a Pilot on one side and a Loves on the other. The Pilot was listed, the Loves was not. But that looked like an area that may not get a lot of traffic, so um, I'm gonna manually put that in to my Garmin as well. So, all these little things, so. All right, I'm gonna take a slight break. We got about 100 miles left uh, until we get to the receiver. Where are you going today? <laughs> well, this is where we're at. Now for you folks that have followed me on the Flight Simulator 2, or just Flight Simulator Tour, especially back from Flight Simulator 2, you know we've come up from Chicago when we flew to Where's Kankakee at? <laughs> oh, there it is, right there. Kankakee, all the way down to Champaign, but we also went to Bloomington. Uh, no, Rockford. That is where the next load's gonna be, though, is Rockford. But yeah, we also went to, let's see, Peoria. We went to Peoria. And wherever the Quad City Airport is at, I thought it was up here. I think that's. A, I think it's up here. I think the Quad City Airport is up here. Yeah, da Davenport, Moline, Rock Island. Yeah, that's where the Quad City Airport is at. Oh, Dubuque. Remember that? The Duke. <laughs> we f we flew up there too. Let's see, so flight sim my flight simulator fans, you guys are getting some awesome <laughs> material here. We got monarchs and milkweed. The value of roadsides. The birds and the bees. Just so you people know that wood and charcoal fires are prohibited in rest areas. So. Just in case you folks wanted to know what the rules and regulations are for rest areas in Illinois, well, here you go. Of course, the real question I've got right there is the sleeping overnight on the grounds, benches, or the building of the rest area is prohibited. Now, does that mean in your vehicle? Or is it just like, you know, outside? I'm thinking it's outside because there's nothing here for vehicles in regards to sleeping. Ah, just kind of enjoying ourselves here a little bit before we get back on the road.
I'm going to take another look at the inverter. Sometimes when the battery is low, I guess with the inverter it doesn't work, but I'll just double check it and see if it works now. Okay, good deal. I figured it out. There is a light on right here. There's a button here. This is a reset button. I thought maybe I needed to turn it on, turn it off, or whatever. But once I did this reset button here, the light went out. And it works just fine now. So if I plug that in, uh, it lets me know that my phone is charging. So, woohoo! We're good! I don't have to buy uh, an inverter. <laughs> I thought I was going to have to buy my own. Okay, well, now that I got that situated, I kept thinking there was something I had to do because it came on, but it just wasn't giving power. And I kept wondering if that light had something to do with it or if it was, if it was just saying, oh, yeah, these got power. Um, I know I pressed that button before, but it was just by random, you know, chance. It's like, eh, push this button, push that button, push, you know, uh, until something worked. But now I know that if that little light shows up, um, it means you need to push that reset button. Uh, then the light goes out and it seems to work just fine. So that's it. We're good to go. Um, I switched the generator uh, back over to the plug-in because it's quicker uh, to charge up. And that's it. So let's go ahead and uh, get going. Let's get this load delivered.
I'm just trying to get the truck started here, but... Oh, come on. There it goes. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Come on, Chiana. Alright, we're checked in, so we're going to go drop our trailer. Okie dokie, the trailer is now dropped. Uh, Alright, so I struggled a little bit there with the with the parking. It's like I got my set up. It was a beautiful angle, but I I pulled forward a little too um, I did my S maneuver a little too late. So the back was was kind of close to the um, when backing up. So that's why I kind of had to back, straighten up, and kind of wiggle my way uh, in, making use of that space there in front of me. <sighs> really? <laughs> and interesting enough, for those people who are wondering, oh, there's a way that you can get around with the truck um, turning off like that, put it in the gear. Well, that was in drive, and I didn't realize it. Uh, and it's still shut off. So, well, there you go. See, it doesn't work. <laughs> Welcome to trucking. Uh, anyway, it's dropped. They might have an empty. They may not have an empty. So we may not have anything. Uh, we're going to go take a look. <laughs> we're going to get out and look and see uh, if they're, we're going to get out of this area and then we're going to drive over there and look and see if there happens to be an empty trailer. And if not, well then the fun continues. <laughs>
da 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 No trailer. <laughs> the guy told me, he said, may not have one, but this is the area that's going to be in. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Do you want to get out and look? Uh, we, I didn't say anything other than a Swift refrigerated, which, uh, yeah, they probably wouldn't appreciate if I hooked up that one. But So, we're going to have to send a Macro 10 for a trailer solution. Boy, I love these, don't you? <laughs> but hey, it's got you a reason to come back for, for more, right? Sure it does, so... <laughs> We'll wrap this one up because our delivery is complete. What will happen on the next episode as we try to find a, tra find a trailer? Will we be sent on a wild goose chase uh, to get a trailer that doesn't exist? Will we find something else? Will we find nothing at all? Will we be able to bobtail uh, instead? Uh, same time, same channel, same killer channel. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed this episode. If so, thumbs up. And click that, uh, well, that's the like button, right? Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> and if you subscribe, you can be a part of our killer community. And that's a great way to show your support because you'd want to be part of our killer community, wouldn't you? Of course you do. Because um, you don't want us to get out and look for you uh, if you didn't subscribe, would you? No, the goal is to subscribe. So don't make it our goal to find you. <laughs> Just just subscribe <laughs> it alleviates all problems if you do that <laughs> don't have to worry about anything it's your, it's your goal to subscribe you don't want it to be a goal for someone to find you to subscribe <laughs> got it got it okay good uh and then while you're at it click that notification bell so that way you get notified of when future content is uploaded to the channel such as this show and a bunch of other stuff that i've got on the channel that's your goal and it's my goal to do what i can to provide content for you Anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode. And that's a goal, too. Have a killer awesome trucking day. <laughs>